Hello everybody and welcome back to more Banjo-Tooie. So, last time we finished our first go-through of Grunty Industries. We didn't get everything in there. We have to, we'll have to backtrack later to finish it off. But we did everything that we could do for now. Get out of here, you stupid pterodactyl. What the heck? Why is this guy so there? Die, jeez. Anyhow, we're gonna head off to World 7 today. But before we do that, there's something that I actually neglected to do after Pterodacty Land that we should have done. Now that we have the hatch move, if we go back to Heggy's Hen Egg, that's not the name of it, Heggy's Barn, whatever it is. Heggy's Egg Shed, yeah, that's it. We can use these split up pads here. Swap over to Kazooie. We can walk up here, and then there's this special golden egg up here that Heggy can't reach. We can hatch this just as Kazooie. Clock, special Haggy Egg Award, Jean Jo as multiplayer character. Clock, who is Jean Jo? Yeah, so that one, yes, Banjo Tooie has actually a multiplayer mode. I doubt I'll be able to show it off because, well, I doubt I'd be able to get anybody who's interested in playing this to my condo to play it together. Anyhow, yeah, there is multiplayer in Banjo Tooie. It's not amazing, but it exists, and now we can play as Jean Jo. One of the multiplayer things you can do in Banjo-Tooie is the first-person shooter, uh, like, deathmatch games. So then you can play as Jinjo, you can also play as Banjo-Kazooie, as well as Grunty, and maybe Geno, I think? Anyhow. it's not a whole lot else to do, so we're just gonna go straight in here and complete the next Jiggy Wiggy puzzle. Oh my, that's a lot of fire. Don't put it. Oh, there were already pieces there. That's why I wasn't letting me put it, put it down. That's not where I said to put it. Sometimes the hit detection on where the pieces go can be a little off. How do speedrunners do this one? Do this, this game quickly. It's so wonky with the controls. Like, literally by far the hardest part of this is just the controls being terrible. Anyhow, that's all the jiggies. You have completed Jiggy Wiggy's Challenge 7, so now the Great One will show you the way. Hmm, fiery looking place. Yeah, we're going to the fire world next, everybody. Many consider this to be a lot easier than Grunty Industries. I think it's a lot harder, but I'll get into that why when we get there. Behold the power of the mighty Jiggy Wiggy. Yeah, back on the cliff top. We've already been to this part of the area. Remember that temple on the floating island? We're about to open it. Indeed, the chosen one. You also have enough Jiggies to attempt Jiggy Wiggy's Challenge 8. Well, we could, but we're not going to. It'll be f more fun to do that when we actually start going to World 8. Back to the Wooden Hollow. Ah, oh, welcome! I will now choose your fate! You win a sub super secret exclusive cheat! The secret cheat is... Get Jiggy! Activate it in the normal way! Now get lost! <laughs> there we go! We finally got the secret code from Madam Grunty. I have been doing that basically every single uh, time I started recording a new session. So I'm glad we finally got it. It only took till World 7. 
Yes, the secret cheat you can learn from Adam Grunty is get jiggy. It's not what it sounds like, though. It doesn't just give you all the jiggies in the game, so... I guess before we enter World 7, we're actually gonna go to the Code Chamber in the Maya Hem Temple and activate that. I'll see you guys there. Alright. G... E... G... J... I... Where's the G? Oh, yeah. G... G... Y... The Get Jiggy Cheat will activate the signposts in Jiggy Wiggy's temple. Yeah, it's nothing glamorous. Jiggy Wiggy Temple signposts. I mean, we might as well turn them on. We don't have to read them unless we want to. We're still missing cheats 4 and 5, which come from the Cheeto pages, and then cheat 11. I'm not sure if I've ever gotten cheat 11 to work, because I think cheat 11 literally just takes you straight to the credits. So, make of that what you will. Alright, here we are back on the clifftop. It's time to enter World 7. A very interesting world. Welcome to Hailfire Peaks, the lava side. Two years! Finally, I've made it to the warmth of the lava world with a belly full of water. Yay, Gobi finally made it. He's going to the lava train station. Good for you, Gobi. So, Hailfire Peaks is an interesting world. It's a lot of people's favorite world. I disagree, but it is definitely really coolly themed. As you can see, it is a giant lava world. And yeah, very visually impressive. And the reason why I think this is more difficult than Grunty Industries, even though it's significantly smaller and easier to navigate, is simply, well, it's easier to navigate in the sense that it's smaller and there are fewer floors. However, there is lava everywhere, meaning it's actually pretty difficult to navigate the terrain. It's easy to, enough to actually, like, find your way around, but avoiding falling into the lava is hard. Hey, I don't recall you paying for a tour of my volcano. I'm gonna burn your furry hide. Well, I got hiccups from voicing that guy. Yeah, there is a dragon on this mountain, and he is going to launch fireballs at us, so lucky us. Anyhow, there's a nice little warp pad right there. WARNING! Trespassers in the exceedingly hot water are likely to be cooked! Are you kidding me? Why? Apparently using some parts of my vocal range just immediately give me hiccups, so... I actually think I need to cure these, so I'll be right back. Alright, hopefully my hiccups are gone. So, up here, along this path, we're about to encounter one of the most annoying enemies in this world. Right here, these are the lava hands. They will stretch out of the wall and try to hit you, and they are kind of a huge pain in the butt to deal with, especially because the fire dragon is launching fireballs at you. You can defeat these guys with ice eggs, and basically only ice eggs. And these guys are plentiful, and if you encounter them on slopes like this, you may have to go first person. You can also just weave in and out of them, like so, but it can be a little tricky to do so. And all of this leads us to Mumbo's Skull. Yeah, Mumbo's Skull is kind of a pain in the butt to reach in this uh, world. We also don't even have a Globo, so there's no real point in entering here. However, there's a ledge we can grab over here, take out the snapdragons. There's no globo, but there is a secret passageway down here. And this actually takes us to a different part of Hailfire Peaks. 
simply a different level. And hey, there's a giant crack here. But it's a crack that not even grenade eggs can deal with. There's a giant temple here with a flight pad inside, but there doesn't seem to be any real way of getting in. Uh oh, dragon's gonna fire at us. When the dragon fires at us, he will actually destroy the ruins for us. And um, this unlocks a flight pad, which is going to make navigating this level much easier. Although, there's a global around here. Oh, ouch! Thank goodness for fallproof. Yes, give us the globo. We're gonna need that for Mumbo. Also, these little imp guys are back on the level. You remember them from the Inferno part of Witchy World. They are just as annoying here as they were then. We can at least kill them now with ice eggs, but they're very fast and it can be tough to hit them. Hitting this switch will give us a shortcut from the tent all the way over to this secluded temple, which is nice. Yeah. We can also try to use Wonder Wing and Vulnerability. Except they generally don't dive at you when you are invulnerable. These guys are smart little buggers. And also, the dragon does not like us using the flight pad. We can use it, but we generally can't if we if he's chucking fireballs at us. We just won't be able to take off. Yeah, as you can see, the enemies in this world are so much more difficult than they were in Grunty Industries. Even if it's a much easier to like see where to go on this level. The difficulty is definitely ramped up, ramped up, if you ask me. I also think most of the Jiggies on this level are tougher to reach. Oh wait, you can just rat a rap these guys? I didn't know that. I've never been able to pull that off before. Ooh, that's weird. This is one of the main landmarks of the level. There's a giant coliseum on this side of the lava area. This will actually take us, again, out, it's basically a teleporter. Giant lava pool up here. Yeah, navigating this level is a, definitely a thing. I love the look of it though, like the lava on these peaks. It's a beautiful world, but boy howdy is it tough. These guys are some of my least favorite enemies in the game. Yeah, also sometimes the hands just won't come out and grab you until you're really close. You can take cover from the fireballs in little alcoves like this. There are also some split up pads here. You know what I think I'm gonna do? We're gonna split up. We're gonna use Banjo's snooze pack to uh we said we're gonna use Banjo. We said we're going to use Banjo's snooze pack. Excuse me. Oh, that's right. I was using the wrong button. I don't know why I thought it was Z up C. It's Z. Uh, yeah. Right C. Okay. Yeah, that boosted our health up a good bit. Yeah, when the when the lava hands are really close together and don't actually start sweeping at you until you get really close, it can be very annoying. Warning! Trespassers in the exceedingly hot water are likely to be cooked! This is a different pool. Use a clockwork egg. Nope, clockwork egg did not like that. Man, this dragon is relentless and being like, you don't belong here. Whoops, I forgot I still had clockwork eggs equipped. Yeah, if you were complaining that ice eggs weren't getting much use outside of Jolly Roger's Lagoon, never fear. Oh wait, the clockwork egg actually took out the lava hand. Interesting. Well, that's still far more costly to do than to use ice eggs. Yow! Yow! 
Damn, you crazy! Oh. That little statue was spying on us. Let's go into this room. This looks very peaceful and fun. This takes us inside the volcano. And it's so hot we have an air meter, so let's get through here quick. There's a bunch of switches we need to press in here to make different parts pop out of the lava. Now, normally, if something seconds ago just popped out of lava, you should never walk on it. It's going to cook you. But video game logic allows us to do it anyways. really slowly. Especially compared to Clinker's Cavern, but let's not speak of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, hollow honeycomb piece over there. Oh wait, that's not the way to go. That's bad. Also, before you ask, Wonder Wing and Vulnerability does not let you just run through the lava all willy nilly. Okay, now we're running a little low on air. going now. Oh, we're going over here. There we go. That gives us a Jiggy. That is the first and probably the easiest of the Jiggies to get him on this world. Now there are some signs over here. No! Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, free signs. Read it, please. Hot Link's Cold and Skull and Wigwam! Only a ball of great size can start the oil drill. When things get too hot, remember your bearded buddy. Okay. Some rather cryptic hints, but all three of those will come into play in this world. Anyhow, we need to get out of this volcano. Never fails. You start recording and everybody starts opening the garage doors. Get us out of here, get us out of here. Man, we actually almost ran out of air. That would have been really bad.